Okay, still with us? Awake and everything? Now, I'm here um, to talk to you about the enrollment, right? And so um, I'm going to get into some very specific detail, and I will be able to do that in the next three hours that I have with you. Uh, because Ann Dykstra has said that that was okay. Thank you, Ann. Appreciate that. Um, actually, really, what, what I want to do is go through this very quickly. Um, we are actually in pretty good shape uh, in terms of our enrollment, but let me outline some of the challenges uh, ahead. You know, uh, the, the easy fix for a college or university that has low enrollment and higher than normal financial aid in order to get that enrollment is to increase the enrollment and lower the financial aid. Isn't that incredible? And that's kind of what we did over the course of the last eight years. Now when I say lower the financial aid, I don't want you to think for a minute um, that we retrenched on our commitment to access uh, for students. Uh, Dickinson in 1999 was providing financial aid to 82 percent of the students who were here. And as Annette mentioned, um, 50 cents, actually 52 cents, out of every tuition dollar that was collected, was going back to students in terms of financial aid, which meant 48 cents was going to run the college. Now, I don't know about you, but I know I couldn't get a paycheck sustainable for a long period of time on that kind of financial model. So we had to shift. And if you'll notice, the enrollment back in 1999 was some 1900, I believe, uh, it's increased 22%. This is a campus that was built for roughly 2,100 students, so we are beyond our growth at 2,300 plus. We cannot grow anymore. That's it. And as Annette mentioned to you before, we're at, and I'm going to say discount rate, and then I'll describe it for a second. We're at a discount rate of roughly 32, 33%, which means that 33 cents out of every tuition dollar collected goes back to students in the form of financial aid. That's good nationwide for liberal arts colleges. It's about 39 to 40 cents. We are going to have to increase that over the course of the next several years, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but I want you to keep that thought. We're going to have to increase the amount of money that we're providing to financial aid over the next several years without increasing the size of the student body. All right? So let's get this. If we're increasing the amount of financial aid, that means what? We're taking in less money, right? And if we're not growing the enrollment, there's no additional bump. That's why we're concerned over the course of the next several years that we're prudent, in, even that we continue to be prudent, let me put it that way, in our financial management and that we not live beyond our means because the tuition revenue is not going to be there to continue to sustain the type of growth that we've had over the last 10 years. This is a critical thing to remember as we move forward and think, you know, how wealthy the college is. And, and obviously, you know, the growth in the endowment is critical, and we've done that, and we will continue to do it. But please remember that your paycheck and mine is paid 77% by student revenue. And that's what we have to continue to remember. If you go to the next slide, I just, just very, very quickly, uh, while we were able to grow uh, the enrollment, we also grew, uh, grew the um, measured academic quality of the student body, as you can see the SAT scores there, and also, next one, um, the um, representation of underrepresented students in the class. Back in uh, 1997, only 5%, I don't have my glasses, but I think it's 5%, of, um, of our first year class came from underrepresented minority groups, um, and today almost 15% uh, do. That's extraordinary if you think about it, right? Because what we did is we decreased the amount of financial aid we were offering because we were over offering, but yet we were able to increase the percentage of students of color. And the key critical point here, and this is just fact, is that minority incomes are lower than incomes of whites. It's not fair, but that's the way it is. And so we're, we increased our commitment to access while also controlling our expenditure of financial aid. Net tuition revenue. We see that that's gone up, that's almost doubled in uh, this period of time, and that's because of two things, three things actually. 
with net tuition revenue quickly. The number of students increasing. Got more students, got more tuition. The percentage of financial aid coming under control where it should be. So you don't discount as heavily, you have more tuition revenue. And the third, of course, uh, and what is mostly shown in the press all the time, is the increasing price of higher education. You know, uh, there was a general, um, it's not called General Accounting Office, I think it's General Accountability Office now, right? GAO um, in uh, the federal government released a report on the Thursday before Christmas, and it showed that only 3% of the U.S. college-going population attends a college or university with a tuition charge of $25,000 or more. Why was this not publicized? Because it's not sexy. Congress is saying college costs too much. Everybody's saying, oh, the price is so high, we have to borrow so much. The fact of the matter is, only 3% of the students are going to colleges like ours. Almost two-thirds go to colleges or universities that charge under $4,500 a year. Now, by saying that, I don't mean to diminish what it is we're facing. But the fact of the matter is, we charge what we charge because it costs us more. There's a difference, of course, between cost and price. Um, let me also point out in this, in this next slide, and this is something that Bill mentioned, that uh, our enrollment really has shifted over the course of the last few years. Uh, when I came to Dickinson in 1999, 44% of our students came from Pennsylvania. You know, I love Pennsylvania. I, uh, I live in Pennsylvania. Uh, my kids grew up in Pennsylvania, but, you know, if you want to be a national college, you've you got to be out there. And uh, if you look in particular at the increase in... Um, the out-of-region, the Virginia to Maine corridor that I usually refer to is where the bulk of our students come from. Um, in fact, if you include international students in there, we've increased by over a fifth, uh, about 22% uh, of our students coming from outside of that large Virginia to Maine corridor. But what we see nationwide is a, a shift in high school graduates by race. Look at this, the green line now, or the green bar rather, represents whites. But look what's happening to Hispanics and blacks, and to a lesser extent, to Asian and Pacific Islanders. Over the course of the next 12 years, the Hispanic high school graduation population in the United States is slated to increase 103%. Asian Americans by about 70%, blacks, uh, blacks by about uh, 11%. This is an extraordinary increase at a time when the white population is declining. And the reason this is important is that it will impact our ability to recruit students and also to fund them. So we need to make plans now in order to do that. Let's look at the Pennsylvania high school graduates where almost a quarter, 22% of our students are coming from. And we see again an extraordinary increase um, in the black uh, population of 14% and the Hispanic population of 7%. These aren't increases, these are the percentages that they make up of the high school graduation population. So even within our own state, we need to be cognizant of this as we begin to recruit students and fund them financially. Um, just as a summary now on the next slide, uh, we've spent a lot of time in admissions looking at what we call tertiary markets, markets outside of Pennsylvania uh, and, um, and the Northeast. And, and we see uh, the top growth states, you'll see them uh, there. We're particularly interested in Georgia and Colorado and Florida. Um, and uh, even though it's not a growth state as such, Southern California is a growth area and we've spent a lot of time uh, there. Um, Pennsylvania high school graduates in total are down, will be down 6% between now and 2018, but they account for almost a quarter of our enrollment, uh, and the growth in minority students will be large, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, the next slide uh, simply states what is fact. We cannot grow, and we cannot enhance our revenue through growth. Demographics work against it. It would involve increased costs. If we tried to grow, we would have to add staff and add facilities. It's not prudent in a declining market. Um, because our supply is low, the growth would, involve, would have to involve lowering our admission standards. If we wanted to increase the size of our student body and we have fewer students to choose from, we're going to have to lower our standards. That is not a good thing, particularly in the classroom. Um, 
And uh, if, if, in fact, we have a stable number of students and they have a greater financial need, this is what I mentioned before, uh, we're going to have less uh, tuition revenue. But fear not, we do have plans. Um, we are going to continue our major effort uh, efforts in admission uh, to recruit out of region and by the way you will see uh, as I report through the course of the spring semester that our applications for admission actually have declined slightly um, from last year I believe this will still be our second best year ever but the reason for that decline is primarily because we're focusing more of our efforts in tertiary markets to protect Dickinson five to ten years down the road so we're sacrificing a little bit our time in our core market area, getting fewer applications from them to concentrate on, the, on these out, uh, outlier markets so that we uh, can build a reputation there for the future. Uh, in summary, I hate saying that, in summary, but I'm saying it. Fewer students in the Northeast, where 75% of our students come from, uh, increasing growth in minority populations that have lower average incomes, and the discount rate or the financial aid uh, amount that we offer must increase to sustain both academic quality and what is very, very important to us, and these are not mutually exclusive uh, diversity. And I just want to end by uh, thanking all of you for all you do all the time. Every single one of us is an admissions officer. Uh, we recruit students. Uh, we help uh, to get them through here and create good and uh, uh, content alumni who, of course, will help sustain us in the future. Thank you.